when you're asked to describe the end behavior for a polynomial function, what we need to look at for that function to describe the end behavior is the degree. And what, in other words, we need to find is whether or not the degree of the polynomial is even or if it's odd. So remember how to find the polynomial, the degree of the polynomial. We look for, if it's a polynomial function, we look for the term with the largest exponent. So for example, if we had f of x equal to x to the fourth plus 2x to the third plus 8. This polynomial function has a degree of 4 because this term has a degree of 4, this term has a degree of 3, and there is no variable here, so this term has a degree of 0. The degree of this polynomial function is 4. So that means the degree of this whole function is even because 4 is an even number. What we know then is the end behavior, in other words, what's happening at the ends of the graph. So here, if we're talking about, if we want to look at this grid over here, we don't necessarily care what's happening here in the middle. When we describe the end behavior, we want to know what's happening way over here. And if you can imagine that this just continues over here, we're talking about very large values of x. And over here, we're talking about very negative values of x. And we want to know whether or not they're pointing up or pointing down and whether or not they're pointing in the same direction. That's what we mean by end behavior. So if you think about what happens when you plug in a very large number for x, it really doesn't matter what the remaining terms are. All we need to really look at is the largest term. Because for very large values of x, this is always going to win. This is always going to determine whether or not we're going to be going up or down. In other words, if we're going to be approaching positive infinity or negative infinity. So if you plug in a very large number, it doesn't really matter what these are. Our function is going to be, be increasing. So as x approaches infinity for this particular function, as x gets larger and larger and larger, what happens is we're going to plug in a positive, let's say 1,000 or 5,000 or 10,000, we're going to raise to the fourth power and then do all this stuff to it. And we know that if we plug in larger and larger values, our function's actually going to get larger. So it doesn't really matter what's happening here in the middle. We know that at the very far end, our function's going to be going up. If we plug in larger and larger values that are more and more negative, so if we plug in, let's say, negative 20, and then we plug in negative 22 and negative 2,000. As we plug in more and more negative numbers, this first part here, we know negative numbers are going to be raised to the fourth power. This is actually going to make it positive. So what we find is that the function also will be increasing. Again, because if it's an even degree, this will be raising it to an even power, making all the negative values positive. So our function, as we plug in more and more negative numbers, our function will be getting larger and larger and larger. So that says, as we plug in more and more negative values of x, our function is going to be going up. And what we see here is that it doesn't matter what the degree of the function is. If it's even, if the polynomial function you're given has an even power, then the end behavior of the graph is going to be going in the same direction. You notice that both of these ends of this graph here are pointing up. And that's always going to happen. They're going to point in the same direction if it's even. Now, could they both be pointing down? And the answer to that is yes. They could be pointing down. Maybe there's a graph where there's things going on in the middle, but at the very far end, it's approaching negative infinity. And over here, this also represents a polynomial function with an even degree. The difference between the one that points up and the one that points down will be the number in front, the leading coefficient of our polynomial. And what we find is the polynomial function will point up if the leading coefficient 
the leading coefficient, and I'll abbreviate this, if it's greater than zero, then they're going to be pointing up like this. If the leading coefficient is less than zero, if it's less than zero, then they're going to be pointing in the same direction because it's even, they're going to be pointing down. Now let's look at a graph where we have an odd degree. When we have a polynomial function where the leading term or the largest term is an odd degree. Notice here we have a degree of 5, degree of 4, degree of 1, and degree of 0. So the degree of this polynomial is 5. And notice that's odd. That's all we need to know. If it's a polynomial function and we want to describe the end behavior, all we need to look at is what the leading term is, the largest term in terms of degree. 5 is odd, therefore we're going to be able to describe the end behavior. What we want to be able to say is what's happening as x is getting larger. So as if we're plugging in larger and larger values of x, we're not necessarily concerned what's happening in the middle of our graph. But as you're plugging in really large values of x in terms of positive numbers, are we going to be, if we're plugging in larger values, are we going to be going up or are we going to be going down? In other words, if we're plugging in very positive numbers, are we going to get values for our function when we plug it in? Are we going to get values that are going to be continually increasing or be continually going down, more and more negative? And you see here that if you plugged in 5 or 7 or 100, as you plug more and more positive numbers, this particular function that we have here, the first term is going to be raising into the fifth power and multiplying it by positive 3. It doesn't really matter what's happening here because as we're dealing with really large numbers, it's this first term that's going to win out always. So we can ignore the other terms. So if you look at here, we're going to be raising to the fifth power, multiplying it by 3. That means that as we plug in larger and larger values of x, our function is going to be going up and up and up. In other words, as we plug in larger and larger values of x, our function will be increasing. Now what happens if we plug in numbers that are more and more negative? What's going to be happening to our function? Well, it turns out, if you look here, if you plug in a negative number, anytime you raise a negative number to an odd power, that will also be negative. So this term here, 3x to the fifth, will be negative. Because when you raise a negative number to an odd power, you know what's a negative number. So as you plug in more and more negative numbers, our leading term will actually be going down. You're going to be raising it to the fifth power, so it's going to become more and more negative. So what happens is our function will be approaching, as we plug in more and more negative numbers, our function will be approaching negative infinity. In other words, as we plug in more and more negative numbers, our function will be going down. And this is what happens with odd degree polynomials. The end behavior points in opposite directions. This side will go up, and this side will go down. And what you see here in green, this is what happens when the leading coefficient is greater than zero. Because we saw here, three times a positive number, that's going to be increasing. Three times a negative number, if we plug in negative numbers, a positive times a negative will be going down. If the leading coefficient is, let's say the leading coefficient is negative. So if the leading coefficient is negative, less than zero, then if we plug in more and more negative or positive numbers, our function will actually be approaching negative infinity. And as x, if we're plugging in more and more negative numbers, our function will be approaching positive infinity. A quick example here, if we had f of x equal to negative 2x to the third plus 8. All right. Again, all we need to see here is that it's an odd degree. Our leading coefficient is negative. When we plug in positive numbers, x to the third will be positive. We'll be multiplying that times a negative. That means as we plug in larger and larger values, our function is actually going to be going down.
not really concerned necessarily in the middle, but as we plug in larger and larger values of x, our function will be going down. As we plug in more and more negative numbers, here, as x gets more and more negative, this value, x to the third, will be negative. You're going to be multiplying that times a negative value. So that means as you plug in more and more negative, we're going to have more and more larger positive numbers. To summarize, if you're asked to describe the end behavior of a graph, what they're asking for is for you to figure out whether or not your function will be pointing up or pointing down, and if both ends of the graph are going to be pointing in the same direction. The only thing you will need to look at if it's a polynomial function is the largest degree of each term. In other words, look at your polynomial function, find the degree of that polynomial function, and you'll know whether or not the end behavior is going to be pointing in the same direction like we saw on the previous slide, or if they're going to be pointing in opposite directions. If the leading term is even, then they'll be pointing in the same direction. If the leading term is odd, the end behavior will be pointing in opposite directions. And what determines what direction it's pointing in is the leading coefficient.